Last year, we had an, uh, like an assembly, a speaker um, that came into the gym just here at UNK, and there were hundreds of students there, and it was a speaker um, named Jim Monroe, and he, he, was a, he had a cool story. He was a leukemia patient, and he was told that he had a few months to live, left to live, and his last chance was to find a, a marrow donor so from the National Marrow Donor Registry, and he ended up finding one match out of the millions of people on the on the registry and saved his life. So afterwards, after this, um, he got done, he had a call for people to come up and and uh, try to and join the registry. It was just a simple cheek swab, and there were hundreds and hundreds of kids. They said that UNK uh, had more people sign up for the registry than um, Lincoln, UNL, and Kansas State and Iowa State. So all these big universities, UNK had a lot more people sign up. But a couple months after I after I signed up for the registry, I got an email from the be the match there with the National Marrow Donor Program and they said that I my DNA matched a 36 year old male with leukemia who needed my stem cells and so I, I contacted right back to him and, and told him I'd definitely be willing to do that. When I got the letter it was, it was cool and crazy at the same time and I was a little bit nervous because I knew that with donating marrow you can lose you can miss your whole football season and I could have missed this whole season if I would have if he would have needed my bone marrow but I was willing to do it I would have been willing to put that guy that guy's live for football obviously for the season first of all I had to go and give and do a bunch of blood work and physical and everything at UNMC and they had to just basically make sure that I was um, physically capable and ready to donate and that I was the that I was um, the perfect match for this guy and so about a week at, a week before I donated they needed me to um, start getting injections of a, of a drug called filgrastum and they, I got injections in my arms and stomach and thighs and I had to do that every day for about a week and that um, basically puts your bone marrow into overdrive and makes it create um, stem cells like crazy just lots and lots of stem cells and it, it makes you feel like you have the flu like flu-like symptoms like just sore and achy and tired and just don't feel good at all but so that was that was a challenge having to do that um, in the middle of fall camp, two days for football, so I had to go to practice feeling like that. So that wasn't that was one of the worst parts about it. And then the mo the night before I donated, I drove down to UNMC in Omaha, and that, the next morning I went and they hooked me up to a machine, both arms, and uh, they pumped my blood, the entire volume of my blood actually through a machine twice, and then I had to do it again the next day too. So my blood got pumped through four times total doctors and all the nurses were really, really easy to work with. They were so cool. Actually, one of them said she's been on the registry for years and years and years and hasn't gotten any calls or any, any contact from them. And I was on it for a couple months and I got contacted immediately, which means she said it meant that this guy, he had leukemia and he lo had already been looking on the registry and there was no match for him on the registry. So he was out of luck until I, um, until I signed up on the registry and popped up for him. And, so she said it was, for him, an a answer to his prayers, probably. They didn't tell me the name of the person or where he's from or any information other than that he's a 36-year-old guy who needs my stem cells to live. And they said he could be from Omaha, he could be from Africa, anywhere in the world he could be from. And so it's, it's really neat to, just to know that I helped somebody out. So he's going to get my stem cells after he's done with his treatment. And that'll go into his bone marrow and that'll create completely new bone marrow in his body. And then from there, the bone marrow will create a completely new immune system. So he'll pretty much have my, my bone marrow and my immune system living inside of him to, to keep him alive. So that's pretty neat. They can't release any information for about a year afterwards after I donate, um, just in case he doesn't make it. Um, but it'll be really cool if I can, if I can meet him eventually. It'd be really awesome. And so, I'd, yeah, I'd definitely do it again. I'd definitely um, donate again, especially if he needs it, they said, because sometimes they go into remission again afterwards and they might need it again. So I'd, I'd do that again for him.